I'm Adam Kunzmiller with RPG Geek at Gen Con 2014, and I'm joined by Rob Hanso with Fire Opal Media, and we're here to talk about 13th Age True Ways. So, what is the 13th Age True Ways all about? Um, jo Jonathan Tweed and I had decided to design a game together, and uh, 13th Age was the game that we wanted to play in our gaming group. Right. Um, so it's an indie style, but also D20 rolling system, kind of a blend, somewhere in the middle. A bit tactical, but a lot of storytelling mechanics in it. Now, before we finished 13th Age, we knew that if we didn't do something about making a little money and holding the team together, we sure. weren't going to, we didn't know whose schedules would ever coincide to work together again, because right. you know who's going to get a job, who's going to do what. So, so we did a stunt, and that stunt was running a Kickstarter for this expansion book, 13 mm -hmm. True Ways, before 13th Age had actually published, which I will tell your audience is a difficult stunt to pull. <laughs> On the other hand, it actually worked out, you know, uh, and it, and so uh, we got we got a good deal of support, and uh, the book has taken oh surprise surprise the book took longer than we expected, etc. But 13th Age and 13 True Ways, they're labors of love. Sure. We very much, uh, we, we pour, we try to make every page fun, and we try to like not waste your time when you're reading paragraphs. You know, it's like make something interesting every time. So mm -hmm. 32 True Ways, I don't know how many people remember the reference, but one, do you remember the reference? There's one true way to play a game, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so I that's was, what I was referring so to. So that's what I was referring to. I was kind of like, no, let's let's give it all. So <laughs> as an example, I mean, I'll just say, sure. you know, just a, the book is full of, it's like an old school book in the sense that uh, when we don't make a book of, this isn't a book of dwarves, it's not a book of spells, it's not a book of classes, it's a book of everything because we wanted to do a book that had all the coolest stuff we could think of, of to put sure. in. So it has classes, it has some magic items, it has artifacts that were designed by back, well, suggested by backers and we designed them. It has a couple adventures, but in it as 13 True Ways, like, is that, is that the camera to... Yeah, sure. Woo! So this is like... The we can also put it in the middle here. Sure. So that's the... Oh, good. Okay, so that's like the picture of Horizon, uh, which is the, the main city of the Archmage. And when you get to the Horizon section, you know, some people wouldn't have imagined that this is what Horizon was going to look like. What? An upper city floating right. a with floating like, spire. Yeah, you know, so, so we have, a, we have a, a sidebar that says 13 ways you could think about the picture of Horizon. Although it's okay. And one of them is this is the perfect image that everybody remembers after they leave, but it doesn't actually necessarily look like this. Another one is. I think, I, so I remember them all. This is the magnificent city that the uh, that the wizard king, the old wizard king built, but it doesn't look like this anymore. You know, uh, and then another one is, this is what it looks like in the spirit world, which you can access by looking into the pool or if you have enough power. So so this is almost like an interesting role-playing Rorschach test that you're having it, here. <laughs> well, 13th Age in general kind of is. Sure. I mean, our goal is to sort of like, when we go ahead and like talk about pieces of the world, we want individual campaigns to be able to, we, if we just give you, oh, this is what it's like, that doesn't necessarily let you fit it into your campaign. So mm -hmm. instead we want to give is ideas that are fun enough that you won't feel like, oh, I could have come up with that at any moment, but right. that instead inspire, I mean, a lot of times, and I admit, we don't, you know, we write something and then we say, oh, don't finish completely the thought allow mm -hmm. the possibility that sure. the individual game, somebody will read it and just go, oh, that, you know, I'm going to do this other thing. And then we could be like, well, that isn't what we planned precisely, but that's your game. But so you do you and enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yep. And you mentioned the Kickstarter. It sounds like the Kickstarter process actually ended up having some interesting feedback and input into the creative process as oh, well, Oh, it, it right? definitely did. So what are some examples of that? Sure. Um, there, all the chapter starts in the book. Here, let's find one right here. Uh, are... This powerful, not not all of them, but some of them are powerful non-player characters who we statted up in the back. It, this last chapter is the kitchen sink. I'm going to show you one. That's Cecilia. Uh, that's Devil Tree, but that's not one of the ones I'm talking about. A nice image. We've got a. Uh, it's this chapter. Oh, it's smiling Sammy G, who apparently <laughs> has become a scary internet. Uh, mean, but you know, I, he's a great guy. You get to know him. You trust him completely. <laughs> completely. He's on your side. Um, so we we went ahead and statted up. 
these guys in interesting ways that kind of almost make them like mini icons. And they may be villainous, they may be heroic, they fit into campaigns and do things that nothing else has done. Uh, when we had we had uh, four back, three backers uh, say, hey, we're going to back you enough to give you a magic item. They gave us a magic item. And at, at some point I was like, you know, just doing a normal magic item, that's not enough for a backer, even if I give them art. So we created artifacts. And so the Feathered Crown, there she is. Oh, nice. The uh, Fist Rod of Blood, the full picture is back here a couple pages, mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, Tavern Brawl, uh, you wear that thing, it's a little much. And, and you uh, see this guy just punched him so hard, his head flew clean off. off. And the Gloves of the Dark Path, you know, this is stuff that was suggested by the backers, really, and we turned real. Uh, flipping more stuff, I would say that a lot of the art in the book, monster art, we added because backers suggested it. Like, oh, here's somebody, somebody wanted a picture of cloud giants. I, am I correct about that? I think so. Somebody wanted a picture of cloud giants uh, chasing somebody, and I was like, okay, let's fit that into Smile and Sammy G. So Sammy G is escaping from cloud giants oh, nice. as they're trying to chase him down. Uh, the Something Awful Forums have always been a pretty big supporter, sure. and they all banded together to buy a, uh, to buy a flying realm, essentially. Send a bunch of uh, crazy wild notes, and we turned it into a, a sort of a dungeon at the end of the book. So a lot of the book was, it really is a funny book because it is shaped. You know, it's lucky that we said, hey, we're going to do everything that's really cool because Kickstarter people wanted a whole lot of different things. So that was sure. fun. And sure. also we went up to six classes because we got funded so high. And so. you mentioned that you had gone from this, the original core book of 13th Age, and now you've blown it out to five, you said? Well, you know, everybody always expects when you, when you publish a book, you want to support it with stuff if people really love it. And uh, I think when we started out, we tried to put everything into one book because we didn't know if people were going to sure. love it enough to have a line. And it took a while to get stuff out. So the Bestiary just came out about a month ago. Mm -hmm. uh, both of these were published at uh, Gen Con. And so realistically was 13 True Ways because sure. we managed to ship it to Kickstarter backers. So there are people coming up to the booth and going, wait a minute, <laughs> you yeah. got all of these? So yeah, it's very fun. And there's going to be a bunch more adventures coming uh, really soon. Uh, one of them, a giant 400-page adventure, which is utterly nuts and great, wow. uh, called The Eyes of the Stone Thief, and another smaller one called uh, The Strangle Sea. Uh, Jonathan and I are pretty overjoyed because uh, instead of getting other jobs and doing other things, we're staying involved and continuing to work on 13th Age. And our next project is 13th Age in Glorantha, which mm -hmm. is uh, Greg Stafford's world, the one he did uh, presented in RuneQuest and then HeroQuest. And uh, we are going to go ahead and make a 13th Age supplement that can all be played with the existing stuff with a couple name changes and suggestions sure. like that. Or you can play in what we're calling myth crawling. Because in Glorantha, it's all about the gods and mythology. And we're going to have, I think, a different style of icon relationship system that fits okay. the gods. And we're going to have hero quests that you enter and navigate, hopefully correctly, because things get much worse if you don't. And uh, it's going to be a very different, it's not going to look exactly like 13th Age, but it's going to be completely compatible. And some systems people could go, oh, I want to use this icon system, or I want to use that icon system, and it'll all be draftable back and forth. I also heard that you uh, won an any recently, did well there. You know, last night we won a silver any for best rules. Just and, best rules overall. And, and uh, yeah. I, I was uh, really, really happy about that, and uh, I... Uh, I, I admit that I did not. I did not fully expect it, you know, <laughs> at all. Because like you, you try to like do these things and not be like, oh yeah, we're gonna win. I was like, and I, I so I was caught a bit by surprise. Yeah. A very happy surprise. Awesome. Yeah. Well, once again, that was Thirteenth Age, True Ways, and various other supplements. Yeah. Thank right. you, Adam. Thank you. All right. It's good. Well, while you're on camera here, was there anything else that you've been working on that you want to talk about? Yeah, sure. Um, Shadowrun Crossfire is its one of those funny, funny things where you've done a game a long time ago. We're now working on expansions, but Shadowrun Crossfire is a game we designed for Catalyst, mm -hmm. and it's a, a cooperative deck building yeah, game. Yeah, I think we previewed that last year. Oh, we you did? did an interview with them oh, as well. Oh, probably with Greg. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah, I think I actually saw that. Yeah. Okay, right. So that's been going well? Uh, it's going well. It right. went well enough. There's, a, there's, there's, there's levels of success, and one level of success is to sell out of all the copies that you brought to Gen Con right. in a day, which mm -hmm. is what happened. So they brought more in, and I saw a picture about an hour ago where the stack was down to here when it had started there. So I think they're probably sold out again. That's great. So, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good one. Very cool. That's very fun. All right, well, best of luck with that.
Thank you. And uh, we're starting the 13th age and going off the Kickstarter on uh, the 27th of this month. Oh, okay. So yeah, we got a Kickstarter to try to fund that too. So and that's the one that's going to be like a 200 page? Like, uh, no, that that's a 400 page adventure. Oh, right, 13th right. age Glorant in Glorantha. I don't know how big it's going to be yet. You know, that partly depends on actually probably depends on Kickstarter. Sure. And it partly depends on uh, ambition, which is right. always, always too high. Yeah. So given what I say, you know, add a few pages. So. All right. right.